If you're intrigued by the subject of UFOs but don't know where to begin part 2. 3. Roswell Incident. The Roswell Incident is one of the most famous cases in ufology, and Stanton Friedman was one of the first researchers to investigate it. In July 1947, an unidentified flying object reportedly crashed near Roswell, New Mexico. The military initially claimed that it was a weather balloon, but over the years, many witnesses have come forward claiming that the wreckage was of extraterrestrial origin. Friedman began researching the Roswell incident in the 1970s and spent decades gathering evidence and interviewing witnesses. One of the key witnesses in the Roswell incident was Jesse Marcel, a U.S. Army Air Force intelligence officer who was involved in the original recovery of the wreckage. Marcel claimed that the wreckage was not a weather balloon but of extraterrestrial origin. In a 1979 interview with Stanton Friedman, Marcel stated, it was not anything from this earth. That I'm quite sure of. Marcel's testimony was extremely significant as it contradicted the official explanation of the incident, which stated that a weather balloon had crashed near Roswell. Marcel's insistence that the wreckage was of extraterrestrial origin became one of the core pieces of evidence in support of the conspiracy to cover up the actual events surrounding Roswell. Friedman also interviewed other witnesses who had been present at the recovery site, including rancher Mac Brazel and military personnel Sheridan Cabot and Oliver Henderson. All of them provided similar accounts of the strange material they encountered further reinforcing Marcel's claims that the wreckage was not of earthly origin. Brazel described the material as being not like any metal he had ever seen before and noted that it was very thin, light in weight and very flexible he also mentioned that it could not be cut with a knife. Cavett and Henderson both reported that the material was extremely light, almost like balsa wood, but was very strong and resistant to being cut or burned. They also noted that it felt like tissue paper based on his analysis of the statements made by Marcel, Brazel, Cabot and Henderson. Friedman concluded that the material warranted further analysis and discussion and believed the material should undergo scientific analysis that wasn't available in previous decades. He believed that the testimonies provided strong support for the claim that what had crashed in Roswell wasn't of earthly origin and suggested that the government had actively sought to cover up evidence. Marcel's testimony is significant because he was a credible witness with first-hand knowledge of the wreckage. Additionally, he was not the only witness who claimed to have seen extraterrestrial debris at the crash site. Glenn Dennis, a mortician at the Ballard Funeral Home in Roswell, claimed that he was contacted by a nurse at the Roswell Army Airfield who told him that autopsies were being performed on extraterrestrial bodies recovered from the crash site. Dennis described how the nurse had become increasingly distressed and had told him that she had seen small, humanoid-like creatures with large heads and eyes during her time at the airfield. Dennis also stated that he had been contacted by a group of military personnel who asked him to supply them with several child-sized coffins. This request had caused the nurse to become even more distressed, leading her to contact Dennis in order to warn him about the autopsies that were taking place. This testimony provided strong evidence that credible witnesses had contradicted the official narrative by the Pentagon. Stanton Friedman discussed Dennis' testimony extensively, believing it to be further proof of a government cover-up. He argued that the nurse's description of the small, humanoid-like creatures corroborated Marcel's claims that the wreckage was of extraterrestrial origin, and that the government had deliberately sought to withhold information from the public in order to maintain control over the narrative. Overall, Glenn Dennis' testimony along with Jesse Marcel and others provided compelling evidence, and suggests that the government had actively sought to cover up evidence. His account of the nurse's distress and the request for child-sized coffins provided strong support for Friedman's belief that the government had been deliberately attempting to conceal the truth. Another key witness was Major Jesse A. Marcel Jr., son of Jesse Marcel, who claimed that his father had shown him the wreckage when he was a child. Major Marcel Jr. supported his father's claims that the wreckage was not of this world. 
In addition to witness testimony, Stanton Friedman obtained a number of important documents related to the Roswell incident, including a memo known as the Ramy Memo. Brig. General Roger Ramy, head of the 8th Army Air Force at Fort Worth, Texas. The Roswell 509th Bomb Group was a subcommand of the 8th AAF. The original press release by the Associated Press Newswire announced that Roswell Army Airfield had reported recovering a flying disc from a nearby rancher's property, first found sometime last week, and that it was being flown to higher headquarters. The curious base press release triggered a national press feeding frenzy. Within an hour of the original press release, General Ramy began disseminating an alternate version of events involving a weather balloon. A photograph taken about two hours later showed Ramy and his chief of staff, Colonel Thomas Dubose, with the remains of the balloon and its aluminum foil radar target kite displayed on the floor of Ramy's office. Ramy reiterated that what was recovered in Roswell was simply the debris of a weather balloon. Later, a weather officer was brought in to officially identify the wreckage. The press accepted this revised version of events, and the Army and Navy launched a campaign to discredit the previous reports, using weather balloon and radar target demonstrations in the following days. The public was told that the weather balloons not only explained the debris found at Roswell, but also accounted for the numerous sightings of flying disks or flying saucers preceding the incident. Friedman was instrumental in obtaining and analyzing the Ramy memo, which has been a subject of intense scrutiny and debate among UFO researchers and skeptics. Stanton Friedman studied the memo from Brigadier General Roger Ramy extensively, believing it to be evidence of a government cover-up of a crashed extraterrestrial spacecraft. His analysis of the Ramy memo revealed that the memo was sent directly to the commanding general of the Strategic Air Command SAC which was highly unusual, as press releases typically went through the Public Information Office and not directly to the highest level of command. This indicated to Friedman that the memo was meant to keep the incident out of the public eye and to ensure that the information was kept secret. Friedman argued that the government had intentionally covered up evidence of extraterrestrial life and had provided a false explanation for the Roswell incident. He believed that the government had done so in order to avoid a panic among the public and to maintain control over the narrative surrounding the incident. This was further evidenced by the fact that the Ramy memo was sent directly to the highest level of command, indicating a calculated attempt to suppress any information about the incident that could potentially cause alarm among the public. Friedman argued that the government had used its power to manipulate public opinion and mislead the public about the true nature of the Roswell incident. This attempt to deceive the public was a gross violation of the public's trust. One of the key figures in the Roswell incident was Walter Hott, who served as the public relations officer for the Roswell Army Airfield in 1947. Hot was responsible for issuing the original press release that announced the recovery of a crashed flying saucer. However, just a few hours later, the military retracted the statement, claiming that the recovered object was actually a weather balloon. In the years following the incident, Hot remained largely silent about his involvement until the 1990s when he began to speak out about what had really happened. In 1991, he signed an affidavit in which he claimed that the military had recovered an extraterrestrial craft and alien bodies at the crash site. Stanton Friedman interviewed Hot in 1993, and according to Friedman, Hot confirmed what he had said in his affidavit. Hot claimed that he had seen debris from the crash that was unlike anything he had ever seen before, and that the military had taken control of the situation and had sworn him to secrecy. He also said that the initial press release had been accurate and that the military's subsequent retraction was part of a cover-up. Friedman believed that Hot's statements were credible and corroborated other evidence that pointed to the existence of extraterrestrial life and a government cover-up. He argued that Hot had no motive to lie and that his testimony was consistent with the testimony of other witnesses and the physical evidence from the crash site. 
Friedman's analysis of hot statements and affidavit added weight to the argument that the government had intentionally misled the public about the Roswell incident and had engaged in a systematic cover-up of evidence of extraterrestrial life. Stanton Friedman's tireless efforts to investigate the Roswell incident have been instrumental in raising awareness about the need for further study of this phenomenon. His extensive research and findings have been widely recognized and cited by fellow UFO researchers and investigators. His book Crash at Corona. The definitive study of the Roswell incident is considered a seminal work on the subject. Through his investigations, Friedman uncovered compelling evidence that supports the existence of a government cover-up. The testimonies of witnesses and the government documents he obtained contradict the official statements of the U.S. government, providing strong evidence that the government intentionally concealed evidence of extraterrestrial life. Friedman's work has inspired a generation of researchers to delve deeper into the subject, and has played a crucial role in bringing the topic of UFOs to the forefront of public attention. Post from user not artificial at UFO believers at Reddit.